Hi, so in this uh, video we're going to show how we can take um, an example flow that we built for a blog post covering the secure Word document action, where we're basically manually triggering a flow to select a document, secure it, and save it to OneDrive. And how we can take that flow and then publish it across all of our SharePoint libraries um, uh, to allow users to selectively secure a Word, Word document. So it's pretty straightforward to do, um, uh, but to do the, the sort of publishing across our entire SharePoint environment, we're going to need to use the Encodian tr trigger product. If you're not familiar with that, if you go to the Encodian website, sorry, click on the right page, um, go to Encodian's website, click on products, trigger, you'll find all about what trigger can do, how it works. Um, but in essence, it's a solution for taking a single power automate flow and then making it available across your entire SharePoint estate. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on quickly how you can get that up and running. So let's just jump back to the flow. Right, first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the trigger action and we need to replace it with the Encodium trigger action. And I'll explain a little bit more of this about this in a moment. What we're going to do, we're going to call it secure word document. Uh, perfect. Now, what's going to happen when, when this trigger runs, uh, when it's invoked, uh, we're going to need to go and get the file. So let's just find what we're looking for. We'll probably get file properties first. I'm uh, just going to connect connection in here. So for the site address field, just bear with me for a moment. What we'll do is we're just going to choose a, uh, a any site, really. Just choose one. So we'll take this demo site. We'll take documents from here and we'll provide the item ID item. Right. So this is just whilst we're configuring the flow. Um, we're going to secure the Word documents. We need to go and get the file itself, get file content. And bear with me a moment while I scroll down. Get full content, there we go. Same principle again, we need to say PDF demo. We take a file identifier. There we go, identifier. <clears throat> so now we've got the file, now we've got the file properties. Really super simple. What we just do, ext, which is file name with extension, file content is the file content coming from the get file content action. We can set a password and we can set the protection type to secure Word documents. So whether you know it's only comments, only allow form filling, only allow revisions, but we're going to set this as read only uh, and create file. We're going to put this into SharePoint. So we'll just delete this and we'll add a new step for SharePoint and we'll do update file because we're, we're going to update the existing file. Again, same principles. We're going to do um, PDF demo. File identifier and file content. So coming back from secure Word documents. So let's have a quick recap. So we're saying when this flow is invoked, go and get the file property, go and get the properties for the selected file, go and get the file content, and finally secure secure the Word document and update the file. Now, in a real world scenario, um, you probably want to do some file extension checking, add some logic to handle those scenarios when an incorrect file extension has been selected, so on and so forth, and feedback to the user, email, so on and so forth. But I'm just focused on the infrastructure of getting this working within Flow. So selecting a file um, and running it. Now, at the moment, slight problem is that this is hard coded to this particular site, this particular library. So this is, if I'm in a different site in a different library, quite clearly, this is going to fail. So what I need to do is I need to use the dynamic values coming from the encoding trigger action. So the site addresses I need to change to a custom value. I want to pass in the site address based on where I currently am. The same for the library name. I need to enter a custom value, and I'm going to select the library name here. Uh, and then I just need to whip through. The actions that do exactly that same process. So get file properties. We can use, um, bear with me, site address. Where's it gone? Enter custom value and we'll choose site address. Uh, we can clearly as well in the identifier, we can use the SharePoint identifier from get file properties. We could also use the one from in here as well. So file identifier, in fact, we'll do exactly that. File identifier. Uh, securing the Word doc. That's all absolutely correct. Don't need to update that because we're just passing properties. Uh, and the last one, again, let's just put a the dynamic values in here. So enter custom value, sorry, site address, and file identifier. Now, this flow is now configured to dynamically use 
any SharePoint site, any site library, depending on where I am. So if I click Save, so I've now updated my flow. Perfect. But I've got one more step that I need to do. So the aim here, so if, we, if we're in a, a library, the aim here is that I need to get this Power Automate flow available in all of my SharePoint libraries. Now, the way that we do that for triggers, we have this actions bar that's visible across the entire estate, which shows you all of the, the Power Automate flows that you want to start. So I need to create um, the trigger action in the Ecodian account portal to make that flow visible, which is really, really simple. So what I'll do, I'll jump over to the account portal. If you haven't already signed up for a trial and don't have access to this, again, pop over to the website, click activate free trial, um, and you'll get everything you need to do there. If you are already an Encodian customer, just go to the just go to the subscription management the homepage. You can click on here to manage to, to activate your subscription and it'll take you through here. So you can see here I'm going to say a three subscription, but from configuration, all I'm going to do is click add an action and I can see the latest flow that I've created with the encoding trigger action at the top. So I'll just call this secure word document. You can see that it's pulled it through. I could give it a description, a run message. Um, the re your request is I can give it a, uh, your request to secure the selected word document as being viewed. Right, I don't want it to appear in libraries. I don't want it to appear in lists. I do, I'm not going to create a form to collect data from the users that don't need it. I don't need to secure this action to only appear for certain AD groups or SharePoint groups. Uh, and I'm going to put it on all sites rather than a specific site or a regex. So I just click create. And that's been done. I click it just to make sure. Yeah. I didn't add a description. Sorry, I just thought that I did not say, but I didn't add one, so that's why it's not there. Uh, so if I go back into SharePoint now, and I can do a refresh, Control F5. What I should now see is this particular action should now be available. So bear with me a moment. So I think I know what I did here. I'm in a document library, and I'm sure I configured this action to a list, which is wrong, which is why it's not appearing. So at least we can see that the filtering works. So I'll select libraries, click update, uh, and we'll go back and we'll do a control F5 again. Uh, and just make sure that I've applied the correct configuration this time. Click actions. Brilliant. I can now see the secure word document. I should have set a description, but I haven't. Um, now what I can do, um, and we'll watch this and we'll watch this run through is I'm going to click back here just so I can see the run history here. So you can see the previous runs. Um, whilst I was testing this flow to the blog post just on how the secure word document action works. But let's take this encoding demo document.docx and let's let's secure it by running the action. So here we go. I'm going to click actions and I'm just click start word document. Your request to secure the word document has been queued. Fantastic. So that should have started my flow. So if I if I run over here and click all runs, we can see that that's that's executed. And I can see that it's run successfully. So it's got the file, it's got the file content, it's secured the Word document, and it's updated the file. Now, the brilliant thing is, regardless of what site I go into now, I'll be able to see, uh, so I'm in a different document library, click Actions, and again, I can start that, that flow from anywhere. So it could be any SharePoint library now that I've configured the actions to appear in, and it will run. Um, so again, I could go back to run history, and I should see a run now for that other file which now have been secured. So you can see how quickly I can take an existing Power Automate flow uh, and then by using trigger, I can create these actions where basically I map um, one of these trigger actions to a single Power Automate flow and then I can conditionally make it available across the entire SharePoint estate and it's quite clever because obviously we can use all of this sort of dynamic values that come from the Word document. Now, of course, I've set this up. There's very little handling logic in here. What happens if the user had selected multiple files, for example, then I'd need to configure this flow to handle that. Um, and that's, again, just making sure you're aware that one of the brilliant things about uh, the encoding trigger is that you can select one or more list items or documents and then pass those into your flow, for example. So. Um, as ever, if you have any questions uh, about Trigger or about any of the uh, flow actions, please contact support.encoding.com um, or visit support.encoding.com. Uh, we'd be delighted to help.